Well, thank you, Sunil, for this opportunity, and thank you uh, to your team as well uh, for showcasing us uh, from Davos. In fact, uh, this pandemic has literally shown, not just to us, but the entire world, how important healthcare is, how important the entire life sciences industry is. In fact, uh, uh, we don't thank them enough, the entire pharmaceutical industry, the entire vaccine industry, the biotech industry. How, you know, how, value, how invaluable they are is something that came to the fore during the pandemic. So let me th thank, uh, for lack of, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, others on the podium, I think I should thank uh, Prasad and the thank entire you. pharma industry uh, of India. And in fact, one of the most important hubs for pharma industry in India is Hyderabad. Uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, Telangana, in fact, is not just an important hub in India. But in fact, it is an important life sciences hub in the world. And the reason why I say that is because since we're just coming out of the pandemic, let me remind each and every one of you who's watching that one third of human vaccines are actually produced from Hyderabad globally, not, not India. Hmm. In fact, 9 billion doses are produced, 9 billion doses of vaccines are produced from Hyderabad. And that, may, that accounts nearly to one third of uh, global vaccine production. So we are the vaccine capital of the world, not, not India alone. And then let me also add quickly, 40% of India's pharmaceutical production also happens from Hyderabad. And the third thing I'll quickly add also is that uh, largest number of US FDA approved manufacturing facilities in any province in, in, in the world are mm. actually in Hyderabad, in Telangana. The second largest number is in New Jersey. So that goes to show you the importance of India's role in, in, in the pharmaceutical life sciences spectrum, mm. and most importantly, how important a role Hyderabad and Telangana plays in, in, that, uh, in that value chain. Now, going back to your question about how the manufacturing ecosystem has evolved over the last uh, several decades, I think we've done okay. I, don't, I wouldn't say we've done well. I think we've done uh, reasonably well, but I think a lot more needs to be accomplished. You know, one thing I believe besides what you said, innovation, infrastructure, infrastructure and innovation, while these are extremely important pieces to talk about, I think um, a conducive uh, ecosystem which, which nurtures, conducive regulatory framework which nurtures and encourages innovation and research and development by, by way of uh, uh, even incentivizing them is something mm. that is sorely missing in India, unfortunately. Mm. And the second thing, unfortunately, we don't think on scale. In fact, uh, if we have to compete with the best uh, manufacturing destinations, biggest manufacturing destinations across the world, we need to start thinking on scale. In fact, Hyderabad and Telangana, we are launching world's largest pharma cluster in about uh, 19,000 acres. I think that is when uh, it will become a project of international importance, not just national importance. So we need to think on scale. We need mm. to have more uh, a conducive uh, uh, um, governance towards innovation and uh, uh, you know, nurturing our talent. Mm. I think that is what is missing right now. We've mm. done okay because, I see we've done okay because where are the real innovations coming from in the world today? Definitely not from India. I mean, we've while we can claim to be doing a lot of other things, innovation is not something that, real innovation is not something that's happening. I know Dr. Reddy's has tried and has, is trying, but uh, it's not happening at the scale at which mm. it should. That's, that's my point. Right. Minister Reddy, if we're talking about the crisis that some countries are still in, talk to me about what happened in Andhra Pradesh and the interruptions to healthcare there and how you managed that. COVID was one particular uh, pandemic that uh, nobody ever anticipated. At least we have not seen that kind of uh, pandemic in our generation. So it was something that was uh, unprecedented. And uh, the entire healthcare system, uh, which was present till then, uh, had to be relicked into in order to prevent something, in order to be a formidable force. If at all something like this were to reoccur, then I think this actually taught us quite a few lessons, especially on, uh, uh, especially moving on to the importance of uh, preventive and curative care, and also making sure that uh, the healthcare system is available to everybody, is accessible to everybody, and also making sure that it is affordable to everybody. So all these aspects were an eye-opener to all of us. And uh, within the limits that we had, uh, we did everything what a country could do or a state could do. Uh, we, were more we were more focusing on 
tracing, testing, and treating. Because, you know, we, from my state's perspective, uh, uh, we are short on tertiary care. And of course, uh, tertiary care, uh, we were a newly formed state, and uh, we do not have a tier one city like uh, Hyderabad or Bangalore or Chennai, where private investment uh, is huge coming into in super specialty hospitals. So, so since we had that handicap with us, so we wanted to get into the uh, early stage, detecting at the early stage. So we conducted almost 44 rounds of house-to-house -house survey. We had a robust system in place uh, with the uh, uh, village secretariat at every village, a uh, volunteer system for every 50 houses. Uh, we had 42,000 ASHA workers uh, uh, also, the volunteers, uh, dealing with uh, uh, health issues be present. And all, this fact, all these factors put together, uh, we, we initiated this uh, process of house-to-house uh, uh, -house survey. And in this uh, uh, close to two years of uh, 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 this uh, pandemic, we've conducted almost 44 rounds of house-to-house -house surveys. So that was one of the uh, primary reasons as to why we could cut, uh, why, we, why we could cut the mortality rate. Even though the country's mortality rate was 1.21%, our state's mortality rate was the lowest in the country, 0.63%. So that's one of the primary reasons.